Hey guys, how's it going? Me typewise. Hi, this is a live demo. Hey guys, this is David. I'm the uh, co-founder of a typewise, um, bringing you to the 21st century. Um, maybe you've wondered <laughs> why you're still using uh, a typewriter um, technology on, on your smartphone, and uh, we're here to change that. So very glad to be on the show. Nice. Uh, I'm just going to switch over to to one of those uh, videos you have on your YouTube channel. Uh, so you have a, a special design for the layout, right? Exactly. Uh, that's one of the things you will notice. Um, I mean, the big like a big challenge that that we have on our phones, um, and and we use those uh, to to type quite a lot. Um, is that keys are small, and that's why we make a lot of typos. According to a study from Uni Cambridge. One of the five words that we type on our phones contain typos, and uh, for many people, that's annoying, or it can even be embarrassing <laughs> if you send out a a, a a wrong message. And our uh, hexagonal layout, um, which we've also patented, uh, makes keys seventy percent larger. And um, together with uh, some smart technology that's now coming out with Typewise uh, three next week we achieve uh, up to four times fewer typos than you get on your regular iPhone or Android keyboard. I, I just saw in this video that it goes from the honeycomb back to a kind of like a more uh, standard or how, or is that just showing the difference between the different uh, uh, keyboards? You always use the honeycomb for your keyboard? No, you're right. We have both options. Um, we understand that like using the honeycomb takes about a week um, to to learn it, to get used to it. And we understand that not every user um, is willing to do that. So we offer both both options. But also the standard layout comes with a lot of benefits, such as the swiping gestures, what I've shown you at the beginning, um, the, the improved um, auto correction, text predictions, and of course, 100% privacy, which is very important. Uh, so, so it's a free app. Uh, it's on Android, iOS. Yes. So it's uh, you can download it for free. You can use it for free. There are no ads. Uh, we don't collect um, your typing data. Um, there is a premium version. Um, so, for example, you will see it in, in this video. One of the key um, benefits of going premium is that you can type in multiple languages at the same time. Um, so I think uh, I'm, I'm just showing it here. I'm in a few seconds. Uh, so is, especially for, for a lot of people that use English um, at, yeah, here you see it, there's a language uh, flag and that just switches when Typewise recognizes, hey, um, you're using another language. Um, so this is automatic and this is one of the premium features. Um, and there are other things such as customizing the, the colors, many advanced settings um, that you can then do the upgrade. Yeah. And uh, you've been, uh, uh, it's been launched for, uh, is it four, three, four years now? Or what's the, because I saw your first videos were, was it four years ago? Yeah. So the, the backstory is, um, yes, we did start of, like four years ago with a Kickstarter. Yeah. You see Ryo keyboard. That it's, it was like a prototype that we did in our spare time. Um, it's, it was very basic um, at the beginning and, um, we just saw, Hey, there were actually quite, quite a few people that, that enjoyed it. Um, even though it was in, in, in now looking back quite, like quite a shitty product. Um, and, uh, we then said in uh, the end of 2019, Hey, let's do this full time. And uh, we, we invested um, a bit of our own money in, uh, in a building like a, like a real product. And we then launched Typewise as a real version at, in, in December 2019. So it has been out for about 15 months. And uh, next week, we have the, the next big uh, um, like app release coming out. And uh, one of the big things you're doing is the AI that goes around it? Or what, what, you really, uh, you, you can confirm that you... You have a better AI than what Google is doing and Swift type. How do, how is that possible? Yes, um, it's a fair question. So um, we work together with uh, ETH Zurich um, with the AI Center. We have a uh, a, a government uh, like funded research grant. Um, so what we do or what we are launching now um, next week is a is a totally new auto correction technology. And um, if you look at benchmarks, um, which we've done together with the university, um, you will see that we, we, 
better, like we correct better um, than what a Gboard um, corrects. Yeah, it's 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 not three times better than 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 Gboard, but it is it it is um, significantly better. Um, better than than um, than a swift key and the reason why it's better um is that uh, we we also look at like for us it's also important not just that the um, uh, that the keyboard corrects a lot but also that it doesn't do any wrong corrections because to the user it's very annoying if you write something and the keyboard starts correcting this to something else and you don't want that so for example we include now an undo button where if the correction is wrong, you can just tap that undo button and then the keyboard learns from you. And that's how we combine user interface and AI to, to like bring those two things together and to, to offer the best possible user experience. Uh, how's a honeycomb compared to the most traditional, is there like more rows or is it just the same, but bigger and a little bit like different angles and stuff? Uh, how difficult is it to get used to it? Yes, so it's very it's very similar in the way of the uh, key positions. So maybe the, the, the reason why Honeycam, um, the reason is that our fingerprints um, on the touch screen are round. And so the key shape should be as round as possible, which you achieve perfectly with honey like with uh, with, with uh, um, hexagonal keys. Um, Changing the, the, the position of, of, of the characters doesn't really help much. Um, there, there are also studies uh, by, by University of um, Helsinki that, that looked at that and, and, and we, we understood that this is, not, this is not helping much using their models. Um, so that's why we, we said, hey, we, we use the better key shapes um, to reduce typos, but we keep the key arrangement as close as possible to, to QWERTY. So to make the, the, the learning and adaptation phase um, easy. So it takes about a week. Um, what we've also done is we've put, for example, space keys um, in the middle because those we use actually the most. I think in English language, over 20% of key usage are space keys. So they should be- in Maybe we can switch to, uh, to the camera so we, you can show yeah, while you talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do um, that. Now I don't see myself, but I hope that this is- yeah. Yeah. So you can see here in the middle are the space keys. Um, oh, in the middle. Yeah. Um, so they're like in the resting position of your thumb. Um, another feature is we have, you can swipe up on the letter to like capitalize it. So I don't have a shift, um, like a shift key, but I just capitalize um, by swiping up, which saves time. And then of course our delete, um, a short swipe deletes one letter. And a longer swipe, you can delete as much as you want. And if you delete it too much, you just go back and until you find the sweet spot. And there you go. Um, so it's really thought about, hey, how can we use um, swipe gestures to, to, to uh, make the, the use of the keyboard more, more intuitive? Yeah. What's happening in the bottom where, where I see there's this, uh, a microphone icon and the world yeah, icon? That's just, Is that's that a big just... space bar? Yeah, that's no, that's just iOS standard. Um, so I'm an, on an iPhone, and that's just uh, given by the system. Ah, so so Apple don't let you play in that area, or nope, nope. Okay, so it's no. different on an Android. Absolutely, no. So um, uh, then on an Android, you would have the 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 mic icon as something in, the, in a different corner. Yes. Yeah, so voice to type is something that um, we have on our roadmap. Um, we, so for us, like the specialty of our AI is that everything runs on the device. So um, there is no typing data um, sent, um, you know, across um, the internet. Um, so if you're using privacy-friendly applications such as signal messaging, for example, it's also important that the keyboard <laughs> and that you're using to type is also private. And that's what you can get with TypeWise. And the same then goes for voice typing. Um, so for us, it's important that when we release this feature, that it also supports on-device privacy. Um, so this is coming in the future. Uh, and uh, all this AI stuff, it just works offline? Yes, so we obviously train the AI with large amounts of data um, beforehand. Um, and then when you install the app, it already works in 40 languages. So we support um, English, French, Spanish, German, and uh, 30, 36 other languages. And then the AI starts learning from you um, how you type as a user. But that um, learning then happens exclusively on your device.
How do you switch to the more standard mode? Um, so you can do that in, in this menu um, where you also have the languages um, that you selected and then you have a button here um, and then you just switch to the uh, standard mode. Yeah. And you would still say that the standard mode uh, for you, your keyboard is better than the Gboard and the Swift? With the version 3 that's coming uh, in on the 28th of April, yes. So what's happening on the 28th of April? Is yeah, we're... Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, it, we are um, releasing um, typewise a 3.0. Um, so this is coming out. Um, obviously, what exactly uh, is, is, is in it, um, that will be uh, revealed on the 28th. But what I can say is that it contains a completely new um, AI auto correction technology, which we have developed with um, ETH Zurich, um, for which we have filed a patent for, um, and uh, which will dramatically also Im um, improve the experience that you will get with a traditional layout. So when you go back to the honeycomb, um, what's your uh, what's your research? What's your science telling you in terms of uh, hitting the characters more correctly? Is that like the is that the smart idea of doing a honeycomb? Is that why the bees are doing honeycomb stuff? Oh, nothing to do with that. Yeah, no. I mean, one of so the uh, there are different components to the science. One component is that you can just look at the the fingerprints and the way um, we hit the keys, and our thing and the like with the the hexagons. They basically maximize the distance between the center of of the letters. So if you compare it to QWERTY, where you have ten. Um, characters in the same row, the distance between those character centers becomes very narrow. And that's why most mistakes happen to the left or to the right of a given key. And we maximize the distance, which reduces the errors. Um, that's one part of the science. The other part of the science is using um, sci like the, the um, existing scientific models that um, try to optimize typing speed also for laptop keyboards and applying those models to the smartphone. And that then helped us determine the position of the keys. The third piece of science is an actual user testing and, and doing A-B testing, which we've done um, over quite amount of time. And then the fourth piece of, of, of evidence comes with a large typing study done by the University of Cambridge, where they've looked at 37,000 people and how they type. And we've then also had our users, typewise users, perform the same exact test. Um, and we were able thus to compare um, the results of different keyboards also against typewise and how everything you know, actually performs at the end. Uh, this is a US configuration right now? Um, German, actually. Um, German, can you? Yes. Is it easy for you to switch to US? Um, I thought there was yeah. a US uh, little flag on the. Yes, so we decoupled um, the language from the um, from the um, layout composition because I'm used to a quartz type of layout, so I like to have the Z up here and the Y down there. But I still would like to write in English, so I don't want my key keyboard configuration to switch when I change my language. So to do that, I can uh, I can open the uh, the uh, Typewise app. Um, just bear with me, and um, you will have uh, here beautiful. This is then the app, and you have here the settings where you can select your um, default layout. You can select your languages. Um, and then the default language determines um, the keyboard layout. So in my case, this is German. That's why I have a QWERTY, a, 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 a Quartz, and not a QWERTY. If I were to drag English on top, um, then obviously that would change. Can we see and, that, how it looks? Um, absolutely. So then you have a QWERTY. Um, and if you were to use French, you would get an Azerty layout, for example. So the Q is, is a little bit lower than the W, and that's on purpose the way it's uh, designed, right? Yeah, that's just the way um, we can, like the hexagons work and how we can maximize the space. We didn't want to make the keyboard larger. I mean, you could also make a keyboard that occupies your entire uh, smartphone screen, but then <laughs> I think uh, that defeats the purpose. 
So we had the constraint of the keyboard size, uh, and within that constraint, we maximized the use of the actual letters um, so that people can type as fast as possible with as, with as much accuracy as possible. So we have uh, comments coming in uh, from the chat. Uh, 6355 is asking, I need to also have check and typical special characters previewed as second layer on the default keys. What can you say about that? Yeah, I mean, it's the same in German. So we have here, we have to you, and then um, you can you can, you can can just swipe um, between those. And it basically s displays um, those special characters that are existent in the languages that you selected. So I have German and, and Spanish, and that's why I have those two. So TypeWise picks, picks the ones that are relevant to your language. And... Uh... He also asked, no, I want to see a Hexa actual USB keyboard. <laughs> is, that this, is that the secret project for, uh, for uh, the 28th of April? I'm yeah. <laughs> um, I, it's, a, it, it's a fair question. I think um, the, the, the benefit of, of, of the hexagons are really for touch screens and, and for, two, like for two thumb typing. Let's put it that way. Um, for 10 finger typing, um, I think the QWERTY, uh, it's, I mean, you don't need hexagonal key shapes per se, um, because you have physical keys, like you, you have this haptic feedback you get from the keyboard. And I think there are other keyboards like Dvorak, which have, I think, optimized um, a, a keyboard layout for 10 fingers. It takes about three months to learn. Um, but if you want to be as fast as possible on on ten finger, then I think there are options out there already. But 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 we really built this for two thumb typing on a smartphone type device. But over there at your uh, at your headquarter R and D center, maybe at the university partnership or something, you already have the the Honeycomb USB keyboard, right? I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, the, for, for for us, the future is uh, rather hey. Where, like, where does the future of typing go? Um, and that is more about, well, why do I have to, when I type, when I type a text, I basically have to type letter by letter. I'm basically dictating to the computer of how to spell my words. And we think this is, this is very cumbersome. Um, so I think the, the, the future will, will, more, will go more into the direction of, of, of the system anticipating how I may complete my sentence. And if this is accurate, I can type multiple words with one single click on the smartphone, on the desktop. So we think this is rather the, the, the type of innovation that, that we will see. And maybe eventually we, we, we won't have keyboards anymore a, as we know them today. Um, and, and this is really the direction that we see over the next five. But they've been around for what? 100 years? When is the typewriter? 150 years, yeah. 150. That's yeah. crazy. Huh? That's awesome. It's a good uh, good invention. Uh, the, the, I yeah, guess. <laughs> I, absolutely. But I'm, I, I don't think the guy had a patent on it. Um, so I think there were parallel um, um, inventions happening in that space. And I don't think there was a multi-billionaire created out of that invention. Um, but I think different pieces that just um, yeah. continued existing. I, I don't think they had billions uh, back in the 1850s. Back then, no, but now they would probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really exist. Uh, so um, uh, somebody says uh, we would lo lose the gestures if it was physical. Yeah, you would. Or you would need, yeah. I think if it was physical, you would lose the gestures. Um, absolutely. Yeah. But it will look dope. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> okay. So uh, do you have like a community of users uh, that are enthusiastic? Um, I, I would love to say so, yes. I mean, we, we do um, have a, a, right now they're still separate between iOS and Android. Um, we, we are obviously very much in touch also with our users in terms of, uh, in terms of features and feedback and uh, we try to involve them. Um, obviously, there are always more ideas than, than what we can uh, deliver. So that's why we have also a, a feature platform where people can vote. Um, so, we, so then we kind of know, hey, what is maybe just one guy's opinion versus what are maybe 500 people saying? 
Um, we also closed a um, investment round last year and um, are, are looking at raising another round this year, which also helps us now to get a bit more speed um, in terms of development um, onto the road. So I, I like to see more features coming out more, more frequently. Uh, how, do you, how do you expand? Uh, how does that work uh, when you have an investor? How do, this, how do you most efficiently use the investment to improve the product? Yeah, I think um, one is we're big, uh, right right now in in terms of geographies, we focus on on the let let's say Latin speaking world. Um, so we have not ventured out to Asia, India, um, the Middle East, um, just to kind of focus. But I think it's still a, like a very large market. Um, the way we we improve the product, I think it's it's uh, it's three things. Of course, um, my co-founder Janice, who also invented, let's say, um, um, the product. I think he always ha has new ideas. So that's one source. Then we have the user community, which is a, which is a a, a second source. Um, sometimes there are new possibilities created by better hardware, by by updates from from iOS and Android. Um, and then it's always about testing these things. Yeah, that's that's for us very important that we always uh, test it in the product. We see what uh, what works better. So we have a very active beta community where we can test new features. We can see um, how to make um, them ready uh, also to like launch on the market. Um, and that's basically how we improve the product. Your your audio, I think uh, your audio. Is sorry, sorry, a, I'm sorry, I've, I've muted myself. Uh, <laughs> is it possible that, uh, uh, that one of the scenarios that are uh, attractive for a business like yours is maybe at some point that it's so cool that one of the companies like Samsung or Huawei wants to default uh, put it in? Yeah, I mean that's. Uh, I think that's a, a very valid growth growth um, scenario. Um, if you look at a company like SwiftKey, um, which in the end got acquired for a substantial amount of money by by Microsoft, um, that's the path they took. Right, they grew on the app stores, and then eventually they were integrated into certain phones, and that's how they um, they grew much faster. Um, I think for us, this is obviously a valid scenario. We are um, in in early discussions with different large companies on that. Um, I think you need a very mature product. So I would like to say that with TypeWise 3, um, we, we are one step um, closer to that. I think there's still a few things that we would like to get done in the next coming months. Um, but I think for us, this is definitely um, a, a, a important strategic um, step to take. And so there's a comment here, uh, sure, but you don't have the smaller, smaller row of characters like uh, these things there. Uh, upper right corner. What can you say about that? Yeah. Um, so special characters. Um, it's 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 a fair point. Um, so right now the way it works is um, it's two things. Um, so we have sorry. Yeah. Um, we have these special character buttons um, which produce up to four characters depending on 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 how you press it. So we put the most frequently used characters directly on the main layer. So you can press the dot, you can uh, swipe up for a comma, you can long press it, or you can long press it and swipe up. And that's how you get the four characters, which works quite well. Um, then if you tap the one, two, three, you get basically this, this combo. Um, now what we've seen is that this might be a bit whoa, um, and it's sometimes not so quick. And especially what we've seen is that different users use very different special characters. So we still don't have all the special characters that exist. So sometimes we get requests for very exotic ones. Um, so we are releasing a, a new concept of how you can very, very quickly um, type special characters. And I think these number, the, the, the number row that you've just mentioned is also part of that request. Um, so I can just say, stay tuned um, for a future update in, 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 um, in the next uh, two to three months. And we will have something very cool for you. Would it make sense to have, uh, let's say, people learn the the the, the letters uh, with your honeycomb, but then maybe they want to do the special characters in a more traditional way, and yeah. so it would switch back and forward automatically between the traditional for special characters, and then the letters in honeycomb. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think um, on on like the Honeycomb is great for 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 typing, but typically when you type special characters, you're not typing twenty in a row. I, I think nobody, well, I don't want to say nobody. <laughs> Maybe some people can, but I personally could never remember where they are, and you usually just need one or two. Um, so I think there it's more about highlighting the ones that you actually use. Um, so we, I think the special characters could become a bit more user specific. Um, and then it's maybe also not that big a benefit of having um, Honeycomb for special characters um, at all. Yeah. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, potential customization happening there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And how, how is it to have such a, an app product uh, and all these feature requests and trying to put them in? Uh, is it kind of like, uh, it, I guess it's it's not so easy sometimes, no, to get stuff done and you have to prioritize the roadmap? Yeah, I think there we have found um, a good way. So we obviously work very stringent uh, in like Scrum methodology and uh, we have bigger objectives for like every quarter. And then we, we see every week what we get done to um, to reach those objectives. Um Obviously, it's sometimes sad when you have to keep telling people, hey, it's coming later, it's coming later. But if they're more important or if we believe they're more important things to get done first, um, then that's just the way it is. I think if you communicate transparently, um, that's the best thing we can do. Um, I think the other thing is you also have the expectations from the investors to keep growing the business. So obviously, that also puts uh, puts uh, puts some stress um also on 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 the commercial side of the team but um that's i think then then the route you choose and i think uh, it's it's also interesting to say hey we actually we, we actually do have the ambition of and i mean not having just one million downloads but like a hundred million downloads and uh not in 20 years from now but like in three to four years from now so this is obviously interesting and uh um, I think it's always then tough when it actually gets on um, you delivering this. And um, it's, I think, always a mix of having a great team, um, of, uh, of having great support, of, of, doing, uh, of doing it the best way you can. And then I think you also need a little bit of luck um, to, to be at the right time in the right place. So you, you are in Switzerland, right? Yeah. Can you explain uh, the, the science behind why Logitech is the best in like, keyboards and mouse and stuff how is it possible that they have all these like there and there's uh, uh, maybe i'm not an expert but i it, it always feels like the logitech stuff is like it's great <laughs> like there's really good like research behind the the stuff and so maybe you can do the same thing but for uh, for virtual keyboards yeah, absolutely. I think what what Logitech and it's and you can also look at another industry, which is like elevators, um, which is a bit different. But I, I spent some time in there. We're also like there's a Swiss company, which is the second largest globally, and they just have very high quality. Um, I think the Swiss. Yeah, maybe this or, or like watches. Um, it's maybe a third industry. So the Swiss, I think they are um, or we are um, renowned for just high, high precision. Um, technology and, the, and with a keyboard it's so important because on average we have over um, 2,000 um, characters um, per day um, that we hit and that's an average and people that type a lot it's maybe 10,000 um, so there's many 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 um, of these points and each of these points need to work 100% perfectly even after you've hit the same uh, on, on a physical keyboard even if you have to hit the same key 100,000 times it has to work exactly the same way and with a software product, it's also like the, the, the smartphone keyboard app gets opened 80 times per day. If it crashes once out of these 80, that's horrible. That's like your keyboard crashes once a day. That shouldn't be the case. So I think they're also pro like quality and the whole architecture becomes super important. Something that in another app, if you open it once a week and it crashes every 80 times, it's like uh, one time per year. That doesn't matter. But with a keyboard, it does. Um, so maybe that's how we as a Swiss company <laughs> can bring those qualities forward. Sometimes I think that, uh, you know, like smartphones are totally crazy, amazing, and they ship 4 billion of them or something like that. But uh, often they're like the, the perfect uh, use of those smartphones are not yet realized because just some companies haven't come yet with uh, the right killer apps. And are you trying to be one of those killer apps? Yeah, that I think... Changes 
I think what we've done so far, I would I would say it's only the beginning. I mean, the keyboard can do so much more than typing uh, because the keyboard is almost your your interface and it's always there across all the apps. So you could also start thinking, well, the keyboard sometimes can anticipate maybe what I want to do and it could offer me shortcuts to to certain apps. So if I'm in one app and I want to get some, and I need information from another app, Maybe with, instead of switching apps and go look for that information, maybe the keyboard can be my, let's say, m my my centerpiece where I can put those different things together. Um, so we have some ideas where we're in discussions with uh, with potential partners on on how to make it like a hub um, of of the user um, device interaction. Do you think something could be done in terms of uh, combining the voice input? with quickly, most efficiently correcting the mistakes that are in a voice input. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah. I wonder if there's something that should be thought of in terms of the keyboard aspect of that. Yeah, I think this is, um, uh, for, for, we're also, we, we kind of have to decide whether um, voice, like when is the right time to, um, to, to tackle voice? Should we do it ourselves? Should we work with someone? But I absolutely agree. I think our auto correction um, is very helpful. We've also seen, for example, with OCR scanning, um, our auto correction from the keyboard can reduce um, the mistakes from an OCR scanner by 50%. So it's a very similar type of technology and the same you could use for voice. And what's very interesting for voice, if you say, hey, the keyboard knows how the user types, and now my voice to text can also use that information. So, for example, certain names. Um, if I say char um, Charbux, I don't even know if I pronounced that correctly. What is Charbux? That, that, that's not a typical word you would find in a dictionary. So a voice to text, I don't know it, like if your voice to text engine is able to spell it correctly. What I'm always think? like, uh, people call me Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but then you could say, hey, because you wrote that two, three times um, and the, the keyboard also knows where in the sentence, uh, if you say, hey, my name is Charbix and you then uh, wrote that a few times and then the keyboard can use that information for the voice to text um, and where the voice to text engine fails, the keyboard can supply that information. Yeah, because uh, I, I really like the, the voice input. It's like uh, kind of impressive, but the problem is there's always two, three, four, five mistakes in the in the text. And the problem is it, it kind of like takes more time to find the errors and fix them. But if there's some kind of way where I can speak them in, but I can at the same time kind of like fiddle with the mistakes and, you know, like some kind yeah. of thing like that, then maybe I would use it more. Mm -hmm. No, I, but you, but you basically highlight you where the system is uncertain. Um, it can maybe do some correction right away, and where it's uncertain, it can highlight and it can offer you even options, and you can just select and maybe go through those five things yeah. and then send the message. Yeah. And I think one of the big uh, things is that every time you have to go click the speaker button again and click the arrow to put it in the right place, speaker button again, but maybe you could kind of like constantly speak type speak type and a kind of like a flow okay this is like again one of those uh, thousands of different <laughs> future requests you might have and uh, can, can you give a little bit of background of uh, what, what's your what's your story and uh, like uh, is this is this the first project you've done or you've done a whole bunch of stuff Hey, we have, I mean, I, with my co-founder, we've worked together before, but we had, it, it was a services business. So we had an online marketing agency um, as a side, as a side gig. Um, but we know each other like since high school. Um, and um, my, my own background is then in, in, in like management consulting. So I have helped companies um, like launch digital products and think about how to move from like offline to online. And um, so that's also my role within within Typewise. Um, but my co-founder Janice, he on like he was he was a data scientist, so he dealt with a lot of data. Hence his uh, his his capabilities with uh, with AI. Um, and he also in his spare time he actually built a couple of products. So he had once like a music uh, recognition um like product he built um that then categorized i think your songs into the right genres and said if it's electronic or hip-hop and so forth 
Um, so from a very early age, he 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 actually did that, yeah. And that's nice. how I think we also work together. Actually, this kind of Shazam stuff, I was I was thinking how awesome that is that this tech mm -hmm. tech can. I guess there's a voice signatures and all these in a huge database somewhere that somehow can be accessed that has all the, I guess they also use it all the time on YouTube uh, for doing the content ID and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is awesome tech. Uh, what about privacy? Uh, I always think these keyboards apps are spying for the Swiss government. I'm joking. Yeah. For, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would not be a problem. I think our, our secret service is not very sophisticated. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that, like, that's for us, the, the big thing. So the keyboard, how the keyboard works is you have two components. You have the app that you can open and then, but that's only the app with the settings and, and, and our little onboarding game. And then you have the keyboard extension, which is available in all your other apps when you're typing. And for type wise, um, the keyboard extension, um, runs like it's completely sandboxed so there's no information leaving that keyboard extension so the typewise app has no access to whatever ha you, you've done in the keyboard extension and hence nothing like nothing is locked i mean it's locked within the keyboard itself so that you have the learning um, and the keyboard gets better but even ourselves and no other third-party app is able to access that information um on, on, on Apple, the proof is that we don't require, we don't even have the option to turn on full access, which is basically that trigger that then the system allows the keyboard to be accessed um, by, by the app, and we don't even have that option. Um, and for Android, the permissions work a bit differently, but also there the keyboard is completely sandboxed, um, and, and hence, yeah, there is no keylogger activity going on. Sometimes... Uh... I think people underestimate, I mean I, I mean, I love Google, right? Google is awesome, but people underestimate how much information they get from just a simple yeah. thing like the keyboard. I'm sure they, they, they get trillions of data inputs on every user just because they're kind of like monitoring the keyboard or that's, I mean, they're officially doing that, right? Or, uh, and they also monitor when people just use Google Maps and navigate and all that stuff. They kind of, they just optimize their ads. I mean, hopefully they're not doing anything that's like totally evil, uh, but they're like just optimizing the ads, right? But there's no. a lot of that stuff happening over there. Yeah. So, I, I mean, Google says they're, they're using a technique called federated learning where they're not directly transmitting your typing data, but they try to optimize the AI on your device already and then only send those, they call it learning increments um, across the Internet. Um, but still, I mean, Google's business model is built around, um, you know, learning from the users and, and optimizing their ads. That's how they make money. Um, and um, there is a third, like there's a second category of keyboard apps. And I think uh, on, on the screenshot you've shared, they were on the very right side. Um, uh, no, we, we've actually taken them out because they were banned from, 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 from Google Play. So there were a, a couple of, of apps, Touchpad, Cheetah Keyboard, Kika Keyboard, um, that acquired like hundreds of millions of, of downloads. Um, there were many of those were Chinese made um, or are Chinese made. And then um, it, over different years, um, they, uh, they were then uncovered to actually have done a bit more, um, more stuff. So they worked with advertising networks. They sold user data um, to them. What exactly they sold, it's not, it's not very clear, but it's clear that they did. And then they got kicked out from, from Google Play. But the crazy thing is they always come back. Yeah, they come back with a new app, which says like uh, XX Keyboard 2021, and they're back in, 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 in Google Play. And within a few weeks, they have again 20 million downloads because they pour in money into that. Um, there, there's a keyboard. They even defrauded clients. They, 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 they did in-app purchases that the user didn't do, and they defrauded their clients of at least 18 million US dollars. And then they weren't covered to have done that. And then they even did it more <laughs> until Google kind of kicked them out. And now they're back with a new app. And so I feel most users are, are not aware. These apps often have 4.5 star ratings. 
which they're probably also buying. Um, so there is actually a, a, a quite big, um, I would say, number number of, of keyboard apps that don't come from the very, very big companies, but somewhere in between. And there I would be very careful as a user um, if, if you value your privacy. Uh, one thing I'm wondering is uh, if, uh, because these, these actually these permission things that were introduced a few uh, versions of Android ago, I don't know, maybe it's already five, six years ago, right? That you, you, you can see exactly kind of like what each app is allowed to do and stuff. But it'd be nice if you can just disable a bunch of stuff but still use the app, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, even possible. I guess the app don't, don't even install if you don't auth uh, accept the whole thing sometimes. Well, Apple is now uh, with uh, with iOS 14.5. They're pushing that so that you can turn off um, like the uh, uh, like adver like advertising tracking. So um, that obviously makes business models more more difficult. Um, we have such a feature. It's called the offline mode. And uh, with the offline mode, you turn off any sort of um, uh, like between the app um, and, and type wise. So the keyboard is anyway separate, but the app itself, we do um, um, like you also have internet access to like load the game and so forth. And there we have this offline mode, which you can switch on. And then um, the keyboard just uh, not the keyboard, but the app just also gets uh, completely sandboxed. Nice. Uh, I'd like to see some uh, some phones like the Cosmo Communicator that I have uh, got over there, and some other cool new phones that should have physical keyboards. But there's always a mode that people want to use it, you know, like upright. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, because a long time ago I always thought maybe it'd be great if people were typing one this way, but it's just it's not a good idea, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's taking too much screen as uh, real estate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Maybe there should be combos of that, and hopefully some some people make a great physical keyboard phone that also has your keyboard for the upright mode because you still want to use it as upright as a bunch of uh, a lot of maybe even more than half mm -hmm. of the time. Uh, okay, but that's uh, that's a different story. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I used the black. I I had to use a BlackBerry uh, from like in in one of my previous jobs, and I was very happy when I when we moved to the iPhone. I think this is uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it, uh, of these type of keyboards. All right. But, uh, cool. So, uh, how many downloads so far? Hey, we, uh, we it's it's on the website. So we've passed nine hundred thousand. Um, so we're obviously looking for the big milestone soon. Um, so this is coming after this video, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> we'll absolutely. Another hundred thousand. All right. And then on the twenty eighth, you will have some kind of announcement, right? Yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, cool. That's that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, thanks no. a lot. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. No. Uh, it was a pleasure. Um, th thanks everybody for uh, commenting and sending some cool questions, and uh, people can check it out on your uh, just on the Play Store. Just uh, go there on the i Store. What do they call it? An Apple Store. Yeah, the Apple yeah. Store. Exactly. Yeah. Type wise, you will find it. Um, you can you can get it for free. Um, obviously you can try the premium. It's also, there's a trial and you can just try it out if it's for you. And uh, I'm always very happy to, to hear um, any feedback you may have. That's Sometimes great. it goes from 1 million downloads to 10 million pretty fast. Huh? We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, there, there are these, uh, I mean, inflection points where I think, I don't know if it's from one, if it's one already, or if it's after two, three, or suddenly the community becomes big enough. Um, and your brand is, has some, has some more, uh, yeah, there's just more word out there. Uh, uh, what's the price to buy the pro? So you can, uh, for 10 euros per year, or you can do a one time 25 euros. All right. Would it make sense to have some kind of thing where you give the pro feature to everybody, but you have some kind of other way to make money or you've thought about that already, right? It's just very hard to combine it with privacy. I mean, then you have to work like with advertising networks or um, things like that. Donations. Uh, Is that donations. a wrong, wrong idea? Okay, maybe. Yeah, it's... Uh... I think with with software, with apps where people are used to, you know, that the apps are free 
like that's the thing um people are used to that 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 those are free so if you just give it for free most people will just take it so unfortunately i think we need to have for certain features like a paywall um, and i also feel it's the most honest thing we say hey these are free and then it's also free and these are paid and those you have to pay and you can try for free if you like it. Otherwise, cancel uh, like you you cancel a subscription and you don't pay if you don't like it in a given time frame. Um, but then that's it. And we don't say, ah, it's free, but maybe you give up a bit of privacy. And I think those for us is like a great territory. And, and we like to keep this one black and white. I love uh, YouTube Premium, where I just basically don't see any ads anymore. And I wish Google would have that on, on, on the whole of Google, including the App Store, some kind of monthly thing people would pay. And then apps could include their pro features on that thing if they wanted. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, if people pay 5 or $10 per month, they could pretty much get maybe all apps free, kind of. Mm -hmm. It, it's up to the developers if they want to be part of this, but mm -hmm. it would be kind of like the Netflix model, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that would be cool. If uh, I don't know why Google is not doing that yet, they mm -hmm. should just do something like that. Mm -hmm. But that's and there's a question asking, uh, what about Huawei App Gallery? No, yeah, it's a uh, um, it's it's a good question. Um, <laughs> there are obviously requests for for that. Um, Again, if we look at the volume of, of, of requests, um, it's it's maybe not the top priority. Um, there is the the thing is Huawei then requires the developers um, to use a different you know like um, interface, especially if you have in-app purchases that can quickly use up quite some developer resources uh, for a couple of weeks. And we think we can add more value to the users by actually making the keyboard better um, first in Google Play and iOS and concentrate on those. And if we once we have more resources, then we can expand geographically or also um, into new stores. Um, so this is the answer I have to give at, at this very moment. Because yeah. there's a famous 30% tax. Is that I'm not going to do anything controversial here, but I guess it's... Anything that has to do with in-app purchase is going through that kind of platform, right? You can't just let people pay on your website or something. Yeah, um, it's not really allowed. Yeah, that's the thing. And get a 30% discount. You don't want to get on the lawsuit with e Epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even they, I mean, they're trying, but Apple is just, uh, yeah. they're hard. Yeah, uh, cool. All right, so thanks a lot. Thanks, sure. thanks again, everybody, for watching. And let's see how it goes from 1 million to 10 million. Maybe this video can help. Absolutely. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank you.